if you were a fan of M. Night Shyamalan and have been disappointed with his last few films and probably the last 10 years of his career and you decide, eh, I think I'm a pass on Split, you've made a drastic, drastic mistake. So just so you guys know, I really, really need to talk fully about this film. So spoiler alert, spoiler alert. If you have not seen this film, do not, I repeat, do not watch this review because I want to spoil the shit out of it. <laughs> so if you've seen it, come on in and join the conversation. If not, go watch this film come back and join the conversation okay back to it so uh the basic premise of split is that uh three girls are kidnapped by a guy that is diagnosed with uh 23 uh multiple personalities and these three women have to try to escape before the 24th personality is unleashed so split is definitely a return to form for m night Shyamalan. um back to uh, films early in his career that he's kind of known for like with uh, films like Signs and Unbreakable and uh, The Sixth Sense that really put him on the map and uh, this film definitely returns him to uh, those caliber of films. Um, one thing I definitely want to talk about is James McAvoy. I think that uh, this is the type of role that uh, him as an actor uh, you, you knew when he uh, was cast in this role that this was something he was definitely going to be able to sink his teeth into. And just being able to watch him perform these different personalities. Now, he embodies 23 personalities, but we actually get to see about three or four of these different personalities. And just the way we're able to kind of see him switch uh, from person to person and the way he creates these characters and creates these personalities, uh, the mannerisms he gives them, the little ticks, the, 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 the mechanics of how he moves his eyes and the, uh, the, uh, the, the way he speaks. Um, it's, it's very intricate and it's extremely and precisely done by James McAvoy. So, with the character of Anya Taylor-Joy, this was also something that uh, that I really was intrigued with and the, and the more I start to think about the film and it sits with me, I really, really like the way they kind of put her story out um, in this film. Now, when she's captured, we're given these flashbacks um, that kind of go back to uh, her life as a child and she, we discover that um, she was abused by her uncle and uh, this in turn, uh, from what we know from her through these flashbacks, she uh, she knows how to basically defend herself and she knows how to uh, take care of herself um, against predators. <laughs> and um, that definitely pays off in the third act of the film as well. Um, there's also a psychiatrist. This is um, the character of Kevin. Kevin is the body that these 23 personalities uh, are are inside of that um, that Kevin has, and he go. He has a psychiatrist that he sees, and her name is Karen Fletcher, played by uh, Betty Buckley. And with this character of uh, Dr. Karen Fletcher, it, it allows us as an audience member to really try uh, to sympathize with the character of uh, Kevin, even though he's doing this uh, horrendous thing um, uh, because of this condition that he has, the uh, dissociative identity disorder. Um, it, it makes us really try to kind of um, feel for what uh, he might be going through. Um, so I liked uh, her character and her journey and her really trying to work with him and even when she suspects that something is going wrong, she, she tries to kind of get information out of him and really tries to 
uh, protect him um, because she feels like there's something special about uh, Kevin and just about um, people with multiple personalities in general. Um, so she was very interesting to watch. Now if there was one minor criticism that I may have had is that in the beginning um, her character feels like it's, she's used more so just for exposition, um, which I do kind of do understand that you know you have to get that information out there. And I also thought maybe some of the dialogue but three, uh, between the three girls, um, especially in the first act when they get captured, uh, was a little. Um, I, I don't think they, uh, especially with the other two girls, not only Taylor Joy, but the other two, uh, probably came off a little. Um, too wooden a little bit but other than that everything else really kind of flowed though I thought the pacing of the film was great I think everything really worked in this film so with this uh, with, with these three girls captured um, Kevin uh, lets the doctor know that there is a 24th personality that is emerging uh, <laughs> that is known as the beast and when this comes into the story, I got a little worried because it felt it felt like this was kind of going in a direction that we all thought that it would go. Okay, he's actually going to turn into a a beast, a monster, um, and it does to a degree. Um, but when you see the ending, it definitely pays off. So. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, that ending to Split. So we come to find out that M. Night Shyamalan is creating a, a shared universe. And he is creating a shared universe with probably one of his most adored, beloved, and uh, well-liked films, uh, which would be Unbreakable. Yes. This film lives in the world of Unbreakable. Uh, the end of this film, I tell you, I did not see this coming. When that score kicks in, when we see uh, James McAvoy looking in the mirror, looking at his wounds, I was sitting in the theater and I was like, wait a minute, is that, that's not, that's not the music, that's the music to Unbreakable. And I, I, <laughs> I just kept saying to, I was like, I was like, wait, I was like, wait, 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 because because a lot of times you hear music um, in movies that have that have been used in other movies, but I was like, wait a minute, Unbreakable is an M Night Shyamalan movie. This is an M Night Shyamalan movie. I was like, okay, hold up. <laughs> then we cut to the diner, and we're hearing the news report about the Beast. Now he's known as the Horde. And you hear these ladies at the bar talking amongst themselves and they say that yeah this reminds me of that one guy about 15 years ago and it was like what was his name and then we see Bruce Willis sitting at the diner and he says Mr. Glass I damn near jumped out my seat <laughs> I was just like you got to be fucking kidding me are you serious? I first I have to explain. I love Unbreakable. Unbreakable was a film that uh, really got ahead of the superhero genre before we kind of got into what's known now as the superhero genre craze. Uh, the, that film came out in 2000, and uh, that was the second film that M Night did after The Sixth Sense. And this film was basically the first act of a three-act structure for the origins of a superhero. And I thought it was a movie that was structurally um, and narratively done to damn near perfection. And a lot of people have been asking, okay, are we going to get a sequel? Are we going to get a trilogy to kind of show uh, the evolution of this superhero? And M. Night has always talked about um, how much he, he has liked Unbreakable. He loves those characters. And it's something that he's thought about since he's made that movie. But nobody in their right mind thought or knew that he would take kind of like a backwards way of making this film part of that universe and basically this is used as 
an origin story for a villain. So you're pitting a superhero against a super villain and you've had two movies in this universe, so to speak, that have been origin stories for these two different sides. And possibly we'll get um, another movie, an Unbreakable 2 or a third movie in this shared universe. But it's 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 exciting. It's something that I've never seen before. I wasn't expecting, especially in this day and age of cinema, where we know everything about every movie it, before it comes out, years, months before it comes out. Like nothing is left to the imagination. And we saw this last year with Ten Cloverfield Lane, with something that kind of gets dropped. And it's refreshing to see something like that. And for M Night to, to be able uh, to keep this a secret and to be and to be able to still shock and surprise your audience in that way to get us riled up and excited, I, I my hats off to no, sir. My my hats my hats off to you. I, uh, there's nothing more I can say. This, I mean, and then even without that ending, I still found this to be a damn good, intense thriller, compelling psychological thriller. Just an absolutely fantastic film. Performances, um, J James McAvoy. I, I think I'll definitely be talking about this. This is January, and I feel like this is going to be a movie I'm going to be talking about at the end of this year. I absolutely loved this movie and that ending I I can't stop thinking about it I just cannot stop thinking about it I, I I've waited for this I've really waited for this I mean and the thing that I really enjoy about this is the fact that M. Night really feels like he has humbled himself because he he was on a big ego trip after like Lady in the Water um, The Happening the last airbender like he was on hollywood's shit list and uh, he was walking around like his shit didn't stink and uh i think he got brought back down to earth really hard and he's gotten humbled and i think him working with bloom house productions um has really given him uh the, kind of like the foresight and the direction that he needs to really take his career uh uh in a new direction and kind of get back to what we know from him in his first uh few films and um luckily with those first few films we had unbreakable and him returning back to that universe i, I think is um it is the right choice for him and i think for his fans it's going to be something that we're all going to be excited for so again i implore you go see this movie well if you're watching this you've already seen the movie so what am i talking to you for go tell your friends if they haven't seen it go see this movie and they if they don't know about m night Shyamalan, show them unbreakable and then take them and go see this movie but go see this movie all right guys so with a score this is a definite A film for me. I would say an A minus. I'm gonna give it a 91 out of 100. But this is an absolutely fun time in the theater. That ending, oh my goodness, I, I, <laughs> I, I probably would have been doing backflips down the aisle. That was, that was just remarkable, remarkable. All right, guys, go ahead and check out my other doors. I said it again. I can't, I can't talk. I'm so excited, so excited. All right at Mouth Dork, at The Disco Dork, and at Sidewalk Siren. And for me, I am The Turtle Dork. And with that, I am out.